Okay, so what I'm going to do is talk about small china vases and gems. And the reason that they're both in together is that they have quite a lot of common features. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, permission to uh, use a few pictures out of the uh, pattern books. And I'd like to thank those people. And there are enough of them that I decided not to list them all who have let me either photograph their pieces or have sent me pictures over the years. Well, I think you all know what gems are. They are basically pieces that were mostly used for crested wear, but when they're decorated with fancier pictures, they were called gems. And the pattern book actually referred to them as gems. Uh, you will see there, this pattern book, big, they call them a gem hat, and there's the end result. So they were patterned with some patterns that were especially for gems, but most of the patterns came from teaware or from urbanware or patterns that were shared with small vases. Now, what do we mean by small china vases? Well, they're vases that are basically two or three times as big. They shared some patterns they shared uh, some shapes. And uh, the pattern books just referred to them as china vases, although some of them were jugs and other, what I think you'd almost have to call pots. There were a few patterns, for, especially for china vases, but most of them were more generally from teaware, earthenware, or patterns shared with gems. They both made of bone china, Production periods were similar based on back stamps and pattern book entries and their shape numbers overlapped. And when I was putting together the Crested Miniatures book for the British and Australian clubs, that caused quite a bit of confusion initially until Linda uh, kindly sent me some bits out of the pattern book that showed uh, uh, what was what. And there are some shared shapes. And here are a few of them, donut jugs, miniature and uh, China one, and again, uh, a few others. And a lot of shared patterns. Right, well, let's look at gems. The earliest ones based on back stamps seem to be some of these blue and white landscapes showing windmills and boats and seascapes. And most of them have back stamps that put them after 1895 when Wildman and Company changed the back stamp. But there are a few with the earlier back stamp, which seem to have had the Foley China added. Now, I don't know whether they were using the back stamp and patterns before 1895 and then added the Foley China, uh, but the Foley China bit makes these. Uh, post-1895. Some of those seascapes were coloured a bit more elaborately, although they seem to be uncommon. And the most common pattern that I know of seems to be things in the Delphic range, uh, often called sunset. Now this was introduced as an earthenware pattern, but uh, when used on China miniatures, in fact on China, they continued with the earthenware number. And there were variations. There was a green moonlight and noontime. And the moonlight and noontime have patterns that were listed in the China pattern book. They essentially used the same sorts of prints, but just colored them differently. And a couple more noontime. There was a series of six scenes depicting Japanese ladies and children. And uh, most of these pieces had a scene on each side, as you can see, the left and the right pictures are simply the reverse of the same piece. And there's an enlargement of them to show uh, how they were printed and then hand colored. There were some freehand landscapes, uh, a number of them. Interesting. And uh, these, there's the pattern book entry for 8177 and 8178. You can see in the center top what the pattern book detail shows, and you can see what the end result was. They seem to give the painters a fair bit of license. And uh, here's 
two both numbered 8177, but uh, same style, but uh, somewhat different in the way they've been treated. And they're fairly rough when you see them in detail, but they all have this same gold surround, which obviously must have been some sort of transfer print. Floral patterns were popular and uh, some of them do not have a pattern number on the base. The base isn't very big and I don't know whether they ran out of space or they just didn't bother. But And I haven't hunted through the pattern book to find pattern numbers for them. There probably is an entry somewhere. Uh, but there are some very pretty all over florals uh, with decorative surrounds and gilding, which must have taken quite a bit of work. There are also some simple florals, probably sold uh, rather more cheaply than the more elaborate ones. And a few more florals on uh, uh, lidded boxes. And a few more. These are were Bob Beatty's collection. I photographed them at his place uh, some years ago. They don't have a pattern number, but they would appear to match uh, a Jacobean litho, which was originally introduced for Milton cups. Golf series scale down in size so they'll fit, also appear on gems and Surrey scenery again. Uh, basically the scenes that were used on larger pieces, but scaled down a bit. And a few hunting scenes. And this is the only nursery scene I know of, but uh, there may be others. This pattern appeared on a fair number of shapes. You can see over on the left, it's actually, I don't know if you can see top right of the pattern book entry, but it was called crocodilin, a strange sort of name, and it's often referred to as snake skin or crocodile skin. It was quite popular for barware and ashtrays and things like that, but you can see a list of the shapes in the picture on the left, uh, which are gently decorated with it. Bluebirds were another one that seems to have been quite popular, and ashbourne, uh, a lot of ashbourne patterns. Which brings me to a small cup shape. Uh, Chris Davenport kindly sent me some years ago some pictures of uh, some gems when, and uh, that's when I found out that uh, the cup and saucer are actually shape 37 in the uh, crested miniatures range. And you can see the pattern book entry there and uh, the pattern, the picture on the bottom right uh, came from the internet. So uh, uh, I don't know how exact the colours are, it was the best one I could find of it. Now there were other miniature cups and saucers made in the 1950s and 60s, as you would all be aware. Canterbury had the same sort of cup shape, but a much lighter handle. Westminster and Dainty had handles that were rather more like the gem. And a few pictures of some of the gem cup shapes. bluebirds. And these, I think, uh, although I've seen them described as gems, I think are more properly souvenir wares. Uh, the Kosciuszko lady on the right and some uh, heather and so on for uh, uh, various places. And that brings me to the small China bar series. As I said, they're usually about two to three times as high as the crested miniature counterparts. They shared shapes you can see here a crested miniature, the china one second from the left, and uh, this shape uh, came out in a few different sizes in urban wear. And a few more common shapes. The Intarsio donut jug top left uh, was obviously uh, probably being made before the china little donut jug. And uh, you'll notice that the earthenware versions uh, seem to be a little bigger than the China versions. There are pattern book references from 1902 to 1914, which sort of puts a date on them, but there are a few small China vases that have the pre-1895 back stamp. Here's a couple of examples. So I think they were making some China vases before they actually 
uh, while I'm at an, an earthenware factory, and then they extended the range. But uh, this is what I conclude. First of all, a few early miniatures in China vases predate the numbering system. They gave numbers one to 17 for the China, small China vases, and they started off miniatures numbering at 20. When they extended the range, there was an overlap of numbers. And in about mid 1910s, small China vases seemed to have disappeared. We have about, uh, I think, 19 different shapes in our collection. Six of those have Shelley back stamps, and they are all from the uh, late, uh, the bit that had the, uh, uh, well, the 1910 to 1916 back stamp that had uh, late Foley China. There may be others that are later, but I've not come across them. Now we do know the shapes because they appeared in the pattern books. Initially, the first uh, 10 were sketches pasted in, and then after that, they have used photographs, and then they've gone back to line drawings. And bottom right on the left picture, which I've enlarged, is shape 32. And they seem to have had a change of heart here because the only 32s I have ever seen have been the shape, that little drawing on top of the other one, and uh, 33. Uh, it was a milkture. They had a range of patterns. Some of them are shown here and there'll be a few more when we quickly look at the shapes. But you see they range from uh, used for crested ware and maps through to uh, a bit of gilding, obviously just used as a vase and to some more decorative examples. Uh, they call these yachting scenes, the ones that we commonly call uh, noontime and moonlight. They were some of the most popular patterns. You'll see moonlight variously has a full moon or a crescent moon, the two in blue. Surrey scenery was another quite popular one. A few hunting scenes scaled down to fit onto uh, the smaller jugs. And I'd like to finish up by having a quick look at the shapes and it'll also show the patterns. The donut jug on the right, I'm told they are wyverns with two wings and two legs. Dragons had four legs. If they're European dragons, they also had a pair of wings. If they're Chinese dragons, they had four legs, no wings, but could still fly. Uh, <coughs> Welsh scenes, and again the shapes. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. We've never seen examples. They're not in the pattern books, so presumably not used. And a few I haven't been able to get photos of China examples, so I have substituted uh, some earthenware examples in our collection. And the same for the two on the right and the one on the left. And 33, because it was last, gets a somewhat larger picture. We have put the shapes up. Uh, our webmaster, Ralph, has put our Small China Vase series up on the website, should you wish to refer to them. That's about as much as I know, but I'm happy to try and answer questions.